previous tutor. In this video, chemistry, we'll be looking at the, the changes of source of matter. And the question here that says, the diagram below shows the cooling curve for a liquid. Now, cooling, we must match cooling starts from uh, liquid, liquid, going to solid. So to cool is more like to freeze something. As a result, it's coming from liquid, it's going to solid. In what state of matter is the substance in area A? When you look at area A, when you have a line, a surrounding line like this, that's not that there's only one state of matter that is existing there. And since we are coming from liquid going to solid, that is the liquid state. So that's liquid. What name is given to the point level B? So if this is liquid, B and C, we are going to have both liquid and solid, then D will be solid. Therefore, B must be the freezing point because that's is, is going to solid from liquid. Those must be the freezing point. In what states, in what states of matter is the substance between B and C? Like I said, since we are, we are coming from we are coming from liquid to solid. B and C, we are going to have two states of matter. That is both the liquid and solid. Explain the reason why the temp why the thermometer are reading remained constant between B and C. Now between B and C, we have two states. That means there's a change of state from liquid to solid. So here there is there is a physical. So there's a physical change so there is a physical change taking place there that's why we have a, a constant temperature Explain what happens during cooling in relation to the heat content of the substance. What here they are saying is, what happens to the heat of a substance when a substance is cooling? Now remember that cooling is coming from liquid to solid. Okay, so what happens? A substance, it has to lose heat so that the particles can come together and form a solid. So what happened to the heat of the substance? The heat is lost so that the particles come closer to form a solid. That's all. Let's look at our last question. When calcium metal is reacted with water, there is a rise in temperature. How would you detect the rise in temperature? Whenever you are measuring temperature, we always use a thermometer. So when you, whenever they talk of temperature, such thing with the thermometer. So you can only measure a rise in temperature using a thermometer. Using a thermometer. What type of reaction takes place? Now remember there is a rise in temperature. We have two types of reactions. We have endothermic and exothermic. So for a rise in temperature, that means there's a, a loss of heat to, to, to the surrounding. Therefore, this, that's an exothermic reaction. So exothermic reaction, it involves the loss of heat to the surrounding. Exothermic reaction, remember, it involves the loss of heat to the surrounding. Wow, endothermic, it involves the gain of heat. Give a reason for your answer. There is a rise in heat content in the to the surrounding to the solution in short potassium is found in the same group of the periodic table as calcium compare the reaction of the two metals with what now remember calcium and potassium they are found in the same group but calcium is found down before potassium 
That means in group one, according to periodic trends, the as you go down the group, the more metals become reactive. That means calcium is more reactive than potassium. And how do you expect it not to react faster than, uh, with water than potassium? Of course, since calcium is more reactive than potassium, therefore, calcium reacts vigorously with water as compared to potassium. Give a reason for your answer. This is because, like I said, this is because calcium is more reactive than potassium. Remember, as you go down the group, elements become more reactive. So thank you so much for watching and please stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video.